Let's start to talk about some other abstractions listed in figure 95. If you look towards the bottom of figure 95, you'll see two abstractions, end map and or map, kind of similar to filter, it turns out. If you look at the signature of these two abstractions, they are the same, and they're similar to the signature of filter. The only difference is that whereas filter returns a list of x, in map and or map both return a boolean. The idea is instead of returning the items that satisfy the predicate, in map and or map will just tell you whether all the items satisfy the predicate or some of the items satisfy the predicate. Let's take a look at how to use them. Again, I'm going to put the signature on the top of the screen just so that we can more easily refer to them. So again, filter, if x's number has this signature, it returns a list of numbers, or more generally, a list of x. But int map has this signature where if x is number, then and map is going to take a number to boolean function, a list of number, and return just a boolean. And that's also true of or map. So for example, if we want to know in this list, not which numbers are greater than 10, but just whether there are any numbers that are greater than 10, then we could change filter to or map. That's going to tell us just a boolean, true or false, it's true because at least one of these numbers is greater than 10. Let's also try to use end map. If we use end map, then we're asking, do all the numbers exceed 10? And the answer is no, some of these numbers do not. That's why we get false from end map. Now, it's nice and all to talk about which and whether numbers are greater than 10, but we might not want to use 10 as a threshold. So what if we want to use a different number as a threshold? Suppose that we want to design a function. I guess I'm going to call it greaters, which is going to take a number that's a threshold and a list of numbers and return another list of just those numbers in the given list that are greater than the given number. So when I say the given number, I mean some lower bound, which I'm going to call low. And if I'm going to name this first input low, then I'm just going to use it in the purpose. So I have a list of numbers, and I have a lower bound, and I want to return numbers in the list that are greater than the lower bound. Well, we have a list of numbers, and it sounds like we want to use filter because we want to get a list of numbers back. So again, if we look at the signature for filter, we see that we already have a list of numbers, and we want a list of numbers. Those two things check out, and we just need to have some helper function from a number to a boolean. But it's not going to be this exact helper function because this exact helper function only checks if the given number is greater than 10. We want to check if the given number is greater than LO. So what are we going to do? Let's design another function. Let's call it maybe greater than LO, huh? By analogy with greater than 10, huh? And it's going to have this same signature because we're passing it also to filter. And x is still number. Okay. Now, it's not that hard to come up with the definition of this function. If the purpose is to check if the given number is greater than LO, then we can just use a building function greater than, like this. But again, it turns out that we want to use in this function LO. LO is an input to this overall function we're still in the middle of designing. So how can we use the input to one function inside the definition of another function? 
The answer is to define the other function, the function that wants to use the input, as a local definition inside the definition where this input LO becomes available, the overall function. Let's write some examples for graders. If we're just looking for numbers greater than 10, then that's all we have. If the input is empty, then the output is always empty. If we want to look for numbers greater than, let's say, 50, then even if the list is the same, the output shouldn't be the same. So now to define graders, again, we're going to use filter. Filter takes two inputs. The second input is going to be the list of numbers we have. And that's what tells us that x is number. So the first input better be a helper function with this signature. And we have that helper function right here. That's filter. But if we run this program, again, we're going to get an error message because we're using LO. And this variable is not defined down here. It's only defined up here as part of the definition of the function graders. And that's what tells us that we need to put the helper function definition as a local definition inside graders. Local, to remind you, takes two inputs. The first input, which is highlighted in gray here, is a mini definitions window. So we can put whatever we want to put in a definitions window inside of these pair of brackets. And it's always nice if we re-indent the code at this point to make it clear. Now, it's also a good time to finish designing this helper function by writing some examples. And because we're using a local definition, we cannot use check expect to automate the testing. We have to write good old comments to express our examples. The second input to local is the result we want to come out of the entire computation. So let's close the local and close the define and test our code. Great, the test passed. And now we have a more general graders function that we can use to pick out the elements of a list that's greater than any given lower bound. And if we change filter to or map or end map, we get different functions that would check if all the numbers or some numbers in a given list is greater than any given lower bound. It's really nice that we could use graders from now on without even writing a list processing template ourselves, but instead using filter. But it's getting to the point where doing this much work just to define such a simple helper function that just makes a greater than comparison is a bit bothersome. We even have to come up with a name and the name is almost as long as the function definition by this point. So in the intermediate student language, we can actually enable a shorter, more concise way to write such simple functions. We don't even need to give a name to this function. So let me show you this other way to write a local definition of a function. And that is called lambda, a Greek letter. And in order to use it, we have to switch to another language. It's called intermediate student with lambda. As I switch to this language, I should emphasize that you don't have to. You never have to use lambda in this class because Everything you can do with Lambda, you can already do with local. It's just that Lambda is a little bit shorter. So for some people, you might prefer to use Lambda. So it's just an option. Here's how we use Lambda to design the same function graders, as you see on the screen. Again, we're going to use filter. And we know that we're going to need two inputs to filter. The first input is going to be some number to Boolean function. So we're going to know that this is the signature of this function right here. And then we're going to need LOM. That's the second input, the list of numbers. 
So instead of making a local definition of the function that we're going to pass to filter as a helper, we're just going to write that function right here. Here's how we write that function. We're going to put left paren and then the word lambda to mean here's a function and I can't be bothered to name it. It's so short, it's so simple. I'm so confident that I'm going to get it right on the first try, or I should use a design recipe, that I'm just going to write what the function takes as input and what the function returns as output. What the function takes as input is a single n, so I'm going to put open and close. That's how I say I want a function that takes n as input. And then I'm going to say what the function returns as output. And this part better be short, because if it's not short, you should use the design recipe and local. It should tell me whether n is greater than LO. And finally, I need another closing parenthesis to close the lambda. So right now, what's highlighted in gray is a function. It's a function without a name. I didn't have to bother to come up with a name like greater LO, huh? for the function. This is the name for the function, lambda n greater n l o. It's not that hard to pronounce, it's almost short, and it saves me from having to write a mini definitions window. So these two pieces of code are entirely equivalent. There's no difference between them, and that is an example of how you don't really need to know lambda if you're comfortable with local. You just need to use local or lambda, one or the other. So to show you how this function works, I'm going to do two things after commenting out the other version. First, I'm going to test this code again. Graders, as I just defined using lambda, passes the same test as before. Another thing I'm going to do is to use the check syntax button again. Check syntax helps us see which inputs are used where. So now, if I mouse over LON, I see that LON is used as the second input filter, but I can also mouse over LO to see that it is used inside the lambda. So lambda is just another way for an inner function to be able to use an input to an outer function. Let's take a look at another abstraction in figure 95. Let's look at map. Map is actually something that you're relatively familiar with conceptually. It applies a given function to each item on a list to give another list of the same length with the same number of items, that is. For example, suppose that we have a list of numbers and we want to, um, let's say, square each one of them. So we could give this list to map and tell it to square the numbers. SQR is a built-in function for squaring a number. And now we have to square each number, and it has the same number of numbers, three numbers, in the output list as in the input list. We could add one to each number in a list of numbers because add one is another built-in function. Just as with filter, when you're using map, you have to be able to read the signature for map, and for each input to the signature, there are two, by the way, x and y, we have to ask what is it. In other words, to use map, you have to start by asking what is x and what is y. Let me show you an example. Suppose we want to design a function that will take a list of strings and find the length of each string. So count the number of characters in each string. So let's call this function, I don't know, length for short perhaps. It's going to take a list of strings and return a list of numbers. It's gonna find the length of each string in the given list, for example. If we have the list like hello, goodbye, then it should give us five and seven because hello has five characters and goodbye has seven characters. There are also strings with zero characters. So if we give one of those to length, we should get a zero back. 
Now that's different from having an empty list because then we also should get the empty list out. That's a list with no numbers, not even zero in it. So let's design this function. If we have a list of strings, LOS, well, because we're going to take each item in a list and do something to it and collect together the results, that's a job for map. We're going to pass LOS as the input to map. Here is a signature for map. The signature takes two inputs, x and y, so we have to ask ourselves, what is x and what is y? We have a list of strings and we want a list of numbers. What map does is it takes a list of x's and returns a list of y's. So if we compare the lens that we're designing and the map we're trying to use, we can see that x should be string and y should be number. Let's write that down. So if we know that x is string and y is number, then we could actually find a more specific signature for map. I'm going to go through the signature, and everywhere x appears, I'm going to change it to string, and everywhere y appears, I'm going to change it to number. We've discovered that map has this signature more specifically, and we already have the second input, the list of strings. That's the list of strings that we have input to lens, and that's LOS. By the way, the textbook spells list of like this, and we spell list of like this, so you could feel free to use each one and uh, consider those two words equivalent. Now, all we need is to pass the first input map. And that's why we know that we need some help function here that has this signature. It should be a string to number function. Luckily, in this language, there's a building function for finding the length of a given string. So it already has a right signature, string to number, and that function is called string length. So I'm gonna use it here. And now our test pass. If we don't happen to have a building function, then knowing the signature of the helper function is a great start to designing it yourself because at the beginning of designing a function is to know its signature. And that's why it's so important when you use map to ask yourself at the beginning, what is X and what is Y?